Uh, guys, in 2020, I made a boneheaded purchasing decision. I bought a bunch of wax, and so far it's cost me $10,000, and it's going to cost me more in the future. I'm going to break it down in today's video. So, background of the story, 2018 Chronicles Blasters, this is basketball. I noticed that they were selling for between like 250 and 300 bucks in 2020, and 2019 Chronicles Blasters were about to come out, and I was thinking... You know, worst case, these should sell for half of the previous year because, you know, you've got Luca and Trey, you've got Zion and Ja. Those are comparable checklists, I felt. And I thought that, you know, the, the floor for this product should really be about 125 a blaster if uh, 2018 Chronicles blasters are selling for 250 plus again. So, you know, I asked my friend who opens a lot of wax and I was looking at the price of 2019 hoops, which were out at the time of uh, uh, blasters. And, you know, I was asking him, like, is Chronicles three times better than than hoops? Uh, this is a guy that predominantly opens wax. He's not a big uh, long term holder. He has kind of a narrow minded view because he opens things for his enjoyment. And I think you know, when he responded to me and he said, oh yeah, Chronicles is definitely three times as good as Hoops in my opinion. It's because the checklist is smaller with Chronicles, so you're able to get more of the key rookies, and for him, that's meaningful. Um, so anyways, that, that supported my buy price, I thought, in, in my thesis, uh, poorly constructed thesis. So my plan was a one to three year hold for these 19 Chronicles blasters, and the day they hit the shelves at Target and Walmart, that's when I started to buy them. And I was paying three to five X SRP. SRP was 20 bucks. I don't have a bot. I never had a bot. I never had a retail hookup. So I was relying mostly on eBay to make these purchases. Uh, in my head, I was thinking, you know, SRP being 20 bucks, that's an arbitrary number. Everything's been selling well past that. Um, and I figured the secondary market would determine the true market price. I wasn't worried about the uh, the SRP being much lower than what I was paying. Um, I wasn't factoring in that prints could go up by an exorbitant amount. So like maybe four to five X with retail alone, because that was unprecedented to jump like that. Um, but I wasn't very familiar with the basketball market as much as I was with baseball. Uh, and I didn't already know that they probably pulled off similar stuff with similar products that panini created uh also they're not being pack odds on the back of panini packs that left me a little bit more susceptible to risk um and i didn't thoroughly scrutinize the change of the underlying contents 2019 versus 2018 because i didn't really open much of 2018 and i didn't really uh look into uh people's breaks of 2018 before i made this purchasing decision so i made all the purchases in a four-day window starting on uh, release day of, I think it was release day of, of retail, August 13th, 2020, ending on August 16th, 2020. And I'm just going to show a breakdown again so you guys can see the details of how much I paid um, and, and when I purchased those. And we'll do the same thing from the, from the selling aspect so you can see how much money I lost when I sold most of these things in 2022 and a few in 2021 as well. The amount of blasters purchased, 200 and 12, that is right, 212 blasters and 19 Chronicles. Dates of purchase again, the four-day window between August 13th through the 16th of 2020. Average blaster cost of $79.36. That's right at 4X SRP. The lowest price paid was $59.50. The high price was right around $102. And the total amount that I spent on 19 Chronicles blasters in that four-day window was 16825 Now, for some details with regards to the selling aspect, I sold 178 of those 212 blasters so far. Dates of sales, most of which were in 2022, some in 2021 as well. Average sale price, just 3655 that's not even factoring in selling fees, which were $8.15. Now, I sold most of those on eBay, and I've been stomaching the shipping costs. So I've been giving people free shipping, so that's another $4 to $4.50 $4 maybe for first class. So that's why the, the fees look a little bit more expensive than the typical eBay. Commissions, 
Uh, net price was then $28.40 once you take off the selling fees per blaster. So just netting 28 bucks off these blasters that I paid $80 for on average. Average gross margin of negative 54%. And after those selling fees, that's an average net margin of negative 64.21%. Money received from the sale so far, so the amount that I've been able to recoup is just $5,055. This is all leaving me with a realized loss between 2021 and 2022 of 9,510 bucks so far, and it's just gonna get worse. All right, guys, so you're probably wondering, like, why am I such an idiot? How is this even possible? Um, clearly, buying close to the peak was something that probably wasn't completely my fault, but a lot of these other lessons I learned, a lot of these other mistakes were mostly my fault, if not entirely my fault. Number one, you know, I, I dabbled in a market that was foreign to me. And it wasn't so much the checklist that killed me and the performance of Zion and, and Ja. It was more me understanding, especially from the supply side, what Panini was capable of with regards to a print run jump from one year to the next. So me not understanding the factors that make up the basketball wax market, uh, specifically from an ultra modern standpoint, that certainly hurt me. Lesson number two, I didn't pick the best product, guys. Chronicles is not one that's typically held for long periods of time. It is not one that has even a legacy as long as a Panini Prism or an Optic. I didn't pick the most investable product. Now, especially if you factor in that I picked the retail in the one of the cheaper retail configurations, the Blaster. Uh, yeah, that, that, uh, that <laughs> on a scale of one to 10, that's like a two with regards to like, quality investable basketball products probably that somebody would pick if they had a choice to pick you know the national treasures or anything down to the, the lowest end stuff so i picked a crap product i also relied on narrow-minded advice from my friend um lesson number three i did not diversify i picked one sku i picked one year i picked one product if you're gonna do this, guys, I'd recommend diversifying across multiple sets, multiple years, multiple sports, multiple genres. Um, that's uh, generally going to lower your downside risk. Uh, so not everything you own will drop to uh, a zero, even though in this case it wasn't a complete zero, it certainly felt like it. Lesson number four, I did all my buying within four days. That is not smart, you should be averaging in 16,000 over $16,000 that I spent within a four day window. That's really, really stupid. On top of that, factor in that I purchased so close to release. Hobby release date, I think, was July 31st. Retail release date was literally the first day that I started buying. Prices are always going to be the most volatile within one month of release or leading up to release. And again, to mitigate some risk, what I should have done if I was going to go into Panini Chronicles Blasters, I should have bought a little bit here, waited two or three months, a little bit more, maybe six months later, bought a little bit more, and I certainly didn't do that. Um, what we saw in the prices that I paid, uh, they, you know, low of around 55, a high of 105, that just shows how much is how much the prices fluctuated within those four days and they continue to fluctuate afterwards in the downward direction. Next lesson, paying three to five X SRP. So I made a point earlier about how the SRP is sort of irrelevant in that the free market's gonna establish what that market price is. But I, I do think that paying four X SRP or five X SRP, it exposes you to more uh, downside risk, I would say, which certainly ended up being the case. Next lesson is I didn't consider the possibility of an exponential production increase. Uh, we saw it with Chronicles Blasters. We saw it with the Hobby Boxes as well. So even if I had picked the Hobby Box instead of the Blaster, they both have decreased right around 60 to 65%, I think, um, looking at the, the numbers, or at least the data that I had access to from 2020. 
Next lesson is I didn't appropriately factor in the change of the underlying contents. So 2018 Chronicles Blasters, people probably pulled some pretty nice stuff from those. Maybe, I don't know, autographs? I Probably low numbered cards, probably any serialized cards, probably. With 19 Chronicles, any numbered card was like very, very tough to pull. Um, so I didn't in my math, like thinking, okay, well, this should be at least half as good as the product from the year before, thinking that there could be a print run jump of like 2x. Well, the print run jump is probably closer to 4x, and the quality of the product probably went down like 80 to 90 percent. So I didn't factor in that, you know, these ultra modern contents, you know, that's ultimately what's going to drive this product, especially for the short term, and especially if there's a lot that haven't been opened yet. And at the end of the day, I just have exposure to these overproduced base cards. And at the time, that's when a lot of people were submitting these cards to PSA. These base cards had more value back then because in a PSA 10, they had value back then. So I kind of got caught up in all of that and I would have never purchased these, you know, <clears throat> the underlying contents in the secondary market. So that should have been at least a little bit of a, a warning sign to me. Like, why would I purchase the blasters if I wouldn't touch the singles of these cards in in high grades I, I wouldn't touch those with a 10-foot pole so next thing I bought very close to peak of market again if I had averaged in I probably could have mitigated some of that exposure and the last lesson is that I misjudged the target buyer so I was thinking you know I'll hold these things for one to three years and I'll be able to sell them to maybe other investors maybe breakers Turns out that the only people buying these cards now, just based on the average quantity being purchased being one, it looks like they're going to different collectors that are opening these just to enjoy a nice rip. Uh, price point is now down to just 35 bucks, so it makes it one of the more probably enjoyable rips from that year. Breakers don't want to touch this stuff, guys. Uh, if anything, they'd go with a hobby equivalent. If anything, they'd go with better brands like Prism, Optic, uh, even Select. National Treasures, Flawless, list goes on and on of products that are just better than this year, Chronicles. So that's it, guys. Lost $9,500. Plenty more to come. Rounded up to 10 k uh, for now. But um, yeah, what do you guys think? Did anybody make any similar mistakes in 2020 uh, with Wax? I'm interested to hear your thoughts. You know, at the end of the day, I learned a lot from this. I actually made a video a few months ago about uh, retail wax and like best practices for picking releases and investing in those products. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Um, at the end of the day, you know, this is a big loss, but with the, the volumes that I'm doing uh, from a wax perspective or just overall in this hobby, it ends up not being too painful, uh, especially that I'm able to kind of stretch it across multiple years. It definitely does sting more than a beast thing. But, um, you know, you win some, you lose some, and I lost this one, guys. All right, guys, that's it. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe. Take care, guys. Filmington out.